Hey guys, this is Jean-Claude, and today we have a very special mail day. All right, I already know who sent this to me. I'm very excited to show you guys what's inside of this thing right here. Wait till you see this. This is going to be very, very cool. It might blow your mind. Let it out real slow. You actually do it like this. Hold on. I was told in advance what this thing would be. What's that? What is this? It's so dark. What is this? Dar oh my gosh. Check it out. This is a mass mutation deck. We have it in advance. Oh my gosh. And uh, also I got a note here from him. Hey Jean-Claude, have fun reading this deck on camera. Shout out to Terry from Hong Kong for selling me this box. Dave Cordero. All right, thank you, Dave. I am very, very pumped up to see what this thing has. Wow, okay, whew. First Mass Mutations deck on the channel. Here we go. What houses do you think we're gonna get? Actually, let's look at this real quick here. We see Sanctum has made its brilliant return. Dis is still here, Star Alliance, Shadows, Untamed, Sorions, and Logos. What is the best thing about this? Oh my gosh, there's no Brobnar. Mwah! Thank you, FFG. All right, let's jump right into this thing. Okay. And it looks like a Grey Archon. First house, Sorion. Second house, Logos. And the final house is Star Alliance. Awesome. Miss Sharpeye Cecile Parker. And okay, it's not symmetric. Seen a little bit of this before, might be a new head up top. Lichened arm, kind of looks very Logos-like. All right, we need to jump right into this thing. So I have a feeling Mass Mutation is gonna be the absolute funnest set to open up here on camera, and I think it's gonna be a blast for you guys at home whenever this gets a full release across the world. The introduction of the new pips, the randomness of where they can show up, it's gonna be just really cool and I can't wait to see how this shakes up the metagame. You're gonna have a lot of just truly unique cards out there and I can't wait to see what crazy combinations come out because of it, all right? Start off with Star Alliance, it's Umbra Alien. It has an enhanced card draw there, three power elusive. Fight, look at the top three cards of your deck. Put one into your hand and one on the bottom of your deck. Oh, that's an awesome looking card. Oh, check this out. It's almost the same exact picture there. Dino Alien, five power play. You may exalt it. If you do, deal three damage to a creature. Fight, look at the top three cards of your deck. Put one into your hand and one on the bottom of your deck. Very interesting. Oh, Captain Val Jericho, five power, one armor. During your turn, if she is in the center of your battle line, you may play one card that is not of the active house. This is looking strong already. Xeno Training, Amber, whenever you play it, for each house represented among friendly creatures, a friendly creature captures an Amber. Another brand new card, Stealth Stir. It has an enhanced card draw on it, three power. Elusive, it may be played as an upgrade instead of a creature with the text, this creature gains elusive. That's fun. Another brand new card, Armory Officer Nell, for power. This enhanced one of our cards with the card draw. After an upgrade enters play, draw a card. Hmm. Oh, a second one of those, very nice. And this is a crazy name, Antone Oney? One Oney, maybe? <laughs> Real quick, I never look at spoilers beforehand, so all these names are gonna be completely unfamiliar to me. Six power play, capture all of your opponent's amber. Wow, that is crazy. At the end of your turn, move one amber from it to your opponent's pool. That is a crazy cool card. Red alert, we're familiar with this one. If there are more enemy creatures than friendly creatures, deal damage to each enemy creature equal to the difference. Another brand new card, Hadron Collision. Remove a ward from a creature and deal three damage to it. This damage cannot be prevented by armor. Okay, that's pretty neat. I kind of feel like it could have used an amber pip, but at the same time, maybe I'm asking for too much. Explo Rover, three power skirmish. It may be played as an upgrade instead of a creature. With the text, this creature gains skirmish. Looks pretty good with those two armory officer nels. Now we're on to access denied. It's an upgrade, and whenever you play it, this creature cannot reap. Ooh, that's a good card. All right, and now we're on to Sorions. It's so salt, and whenever you play it, it's also enhanced with the damage pip. Alpha, until the start of your next turn, creatures cannot reap. 
On to our first brand new Sorion card, it's Humble, and whenever you play it. Exhaust a creature. If you do, move three amber from that creature to the common supply. Wow, that's a pretty cool effect. Dreadbone Decimus, five power. Play fight, you may exalt it. If you do, destroy a creature with lower power than it. Wow, that is a pretty awesome effect. The fact that you can do it whenever you play it, and every time after fights, that's really strong. Also pairs very well with that Humble down there. Spoils of Battle, Amber whenever you play it. A friendly creature captures an Amber. Each creature with Amber on it captures one Amber from its opponent. This is a really cool Saurian card. It plays really well with what Saurians did, at least in Worlds Collide. I'm not sure exactly what to expect here in Mass Mutation. Worst case scenario, this is going to capture two Amber and it scales up very nicely. Oh, we have a second one, but this one is enhanced by a card draw. <laughs> That's so cool. Love these enhancements. Sagittarius Gaze, Amber whenever you play it, enhanced damaged pip. This card has enhanced a damage pip, so maybe it could have gave it to itself. Exalt a damaged creature. So this is really cool that this damage pip happened to be on here. That means whenever we play this card, we can actually damage an opponent's creatures if they aren't already, and exalt it at the same time so we can get that amber in the future. Faust the Great, four power. Your opponent's keys cost plus one amber for each friendly creature with amber on it. Wow, that combos so well with so many of these cards in here. What an awesome card. Play, you may exalt a friendly creature. Oh, I love that it doesn't necessarily exalt itself. You can exalt any creature. So maybe the creature we're already going to use Humble on, we just put it on there. That's really cool. I love that effect. Deimosaurus, four power. Play, you may exalt it. If you do, deal three damage to a creature. Destroyed, steal an amber. Okay, so these creatures seem to have an exalt deal three damage effect. It seems to be a common theme here. Curse of Vanity, Amber whenever you play it, enhanced capture pip. Exalt a friendly creature and an enemy creature. Um, okay, that's a fine card. You're essentially getting two amber to your opponent's one amber. I don't think it's necessarily that powerful though. Console Primus, three power. This gave a card a capture amber pip. Reap, move one amber from a creature to another creature. Oh, a second one of those, very nice. Axiom of Grisk. Ward a creature, destroy each creature with no amber on it, gain two chains. Always a fantastic card to see with your Saurians. Oh, and check it out. Zezin, Zezin, Zezik makes a return in this set, and oh my lord, this card is enhanced by two, count them, two card draws. Whoa! For those of you that aren't familiar with this card, it's four power, two armor. During a draw card step, if it's in the center of your battle line, refill your hand to two additional cards. What an insane card. Novu Dynamo. Eight power, two armor. At the start of your turn, you may discard a Logos card from your hand or archives. If you do, gain one amber. Otherwise, destroy it. This is such a big, beefy card. It's almost always worth keeping a Logos card in your hand, just so you can keep it around, and you're getting an amber off of it anyway. So much value there. Opposition research. This gave a card a damage pip. Enemy creatures cannot reap during your opponent's next turn. Munchling, three power skirmish. Fight, you may discard a Logos card from your hand or archives. If you do, gain an amber. Well, we don't have any archive cards yet, but this is what, the fourth card we've seen in Logos. Hopefully we have some so we can abuse it with both the Novu and the Munchling here. Oh, a second Munchling, and this one is enhanced with a card draw. Infomorph, four power. This gave us two enhanced card draws in our deck. What if they both hit the Zen, 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 Zen. Oh, a second one of those, okay. Even Ivan, four power. Action, if your opponent has an even amount of amber, steal an amber. Interesting. That is kind of a crazy effect to give Logos. I like it, but we haven't seen any other steal in here so far. But once again, I don't know much about this set. Evervescent Principle makes a return. Each player loses half their amber, rounding down the loss. Gain one chain. Diametric Charge, amber whenever you play it. Deal one damage to a creature with a two damage splash. It's a fun little card. A second one of those, and this one's enhanced with the Capture Amber. And the last card of the deck is Auto Encoder. After a card is discarded from your hand, archive the top card of your deck. Wait a minute, that's interesting. So we actually do have a way to archive cards in our logos. And it happened to be the very last card of the deck. All right. Let's get this up and check out our amber. It didn't feel like we had an insane amount. But, uh... Should be serviceable. Let's see here. Yeah. Actually, it felt kind of light now that I'm going back through it. Because I don't think we had that many in Star Alliance, if any at all. Okay, there we go. There's one. Oh, boy. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, you know what? Kind of eight. Because we're going to exalt a damaged creature. Okay. Nine. Uh, we can say ten. Eleven. Twelve. 
12 amber, and that was being a little bit generous. Oh, I guess we also had some destroyed where we could steal some amber, which gets us a little bit amber as well. I think 13's a safe number for this. All right, let's bring up our amber control. So Xeno training's great. Okay, opponent's creature cannot reap. That's nice. So salt will kind of go there as well. Humble takes amber away from them, but not necessarily. There we go. Spoils of war. That's fantastic. Let's see. Everence in principle always. Well, this will do it about 50% of the time if it survives. Munchling. Opposition research. I guess we'll pull that up. We have quite a few things that are stopping our opponents from reaping. That's kind of interesting. Console is just moving amber, which is a really cool effect. Okay, it's destroyed steel and amber. Foss making their keys cost plus one for each amber on our creatures. Okay, let's see. Oh, very nice. Taking away all the opponent's amber. All right, let's count it up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow, that's a little bit more than I was expecting. Okay, Amber, great Amber control. Had several cards that were great for taking several Amber. What's interesting here is we have a bunch of cards that are controlling a lot of Amber. The Spoils of War, the, we'll just call it Anthony for now, the Efforts and Principle, the Xeno Training can take up the three. It's kind of crazy, actually. Making our opponent's keys cost more with Faust, actually. Where is he at? Right there. Not much steel in here, but actual Amber control, pretty nice. All right, let's get our creatures up now. I'm hoping for a lot, but I don't think there was that many, really. We had a lot of actions, only one artifact, but yeah, it felt like there was quite a few actions in here. It's gonna really lower our count, and we kinda need that. There actually was a decent amount of upgrades that we'll be able to draw some cards off of, so that's pretty cool. Man, Captain Val Jericho, having two different leaders, increasing our odds of drawing one at the start of the game, that's really cool. They are such huge effects, and I love how often I'm gonna be able to at least mulligan for them. All right, so the creatures, we have one, Five, 10, 15, 20. Okay, that's surprising. It's about two more than I was thinking we had. Very, very cool. I'm liking this the more I get to see it. I just realized before we get into this whole deck, there is something I easily could have missed as I was looking at the cards, looking to see how much amber control we had. I wasn't even thinking about capture pips, right? So hold up, let's see. I knew we had at least one. Okay, right there, there's one, two. Okay, well that's two more to Amber Control. That's pretty sweet, wow. What a crazy thing that we're gonna have to look out for from this point forward. First thing I noticed about this deck, it should be a mover. We have quite a bit of card draw in here or just ways to filter. So you got card draw here. We'll just pull them all kind of up here. Captain Val Jericho will help, got a card draw. Anytime we play upgrades, we're gonna get a card draw which I guess we can kind of pull the upgrades with. Uh, I guess we won't, but we'll keep a little mental note there. Wow. Z that's also drawn to on the same turn, so maybe we can play some more Logos cards and then refilling our hand back up to eight's nice. I'm gonna put Novu in this category as well because it can help us cycle through our deck faster by discarding those Logos cards. Munchlings will do the same. Let's see here. Oh, and then obviously, gosh, the card draws. See, I'm not used to looking for card draw pips. Kind of quickly go back through the couple of these we passed up. Okay. It's so weird. I got to read the cards and also look for the amber pips. It'd be a lot easier whenever I could just look at the picture and know what the card is. All right. Let's see. Okay. So we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards that are helping us kind of move through the deck. Once again, that's not including the upgrades, which I felt like we had across almost every house, did we? Star Alliance, maybe not in Logos. Okay, we didn't have any in Logos. No taunts to protect these creatures. Let's see, what was our bigger creatures here? We had the eight power Novu, but we can't necessarily rely on it sticking around. Got a lot of actual board control here. A lot of creatures that do three damage if we exalt them. Got a little bit of damage pips across the board. And of course, these diametric charges are pretty cool too. Doing the one damage with the two damage splash. Axiom Grisk is always good. Still don't know how I feel about Hadron Collision. This is one of those cards you're going to have to play with to really get the feel for it. I'm sure it's fine though. It is way too early to try and give a rating for this deck. Being unfamiliar with Mass Mutations, not seeing any spoilers. I think this deck is better than an average deck that we've seen in the past, so that's positive. 
Lots of really cool cards, great effects. At the same time though, there was a few cards that kind of felt like they aren't going to do too much in here. I mean, Red Alert, we had 20 creatures, so maybe this isn't necessarily going to do that much. It is nice spreading some of the damage around. The Spoils of War will always be good. Let's, see, let's just kind of look at these actions a little bit more. Consoles, those are very nice. Moving around the Amber. Infomorph adding draws can do some crazy things, but on their own being just four power creatures isn't necessarily that great. I do like having the steel attached to some of the creatures, whether they're destroyed or if our opponent has an even amount of amber, how funny is that? Faust is nice, but without like taunts to really protect him. Well, I guess we could kind of protect him with, hold on here. Let's find the card, I don't remember the name. Oh, here we go, Stelster. Playing this as an upgrade to give a creature elusive is gonna be pretty nice. Ooh, actually, man, put that right on Captain Val Jericho. That's sweet. Yeah, or the Z. Yeah, having an upgrade that gives elusive is pretty cool. And if you don't have any creatures, being able to play it as a creature is awesome as well. Not sure what to think about Auto Encoder. I have a good feeling this is going to be an insane card overall. In this deck, maybe not so much. But I can imagine it's still going to help us maybe just get some cards out of our deck in a very fast cycling deck. This may not be the best cycling deck for it, but could you imagine if you had a bunch of card draw pips or filtering with Auto Encoder? That deck is going to fly. Thank you, Dave Cordero, for sending me this. Thank you, Terry, for selling him this box. How neat was this? Very, very cool. Wait a minute. I just realized this is in Chinese. What the heck? What? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a good one, Dave. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching my videos, and I'll see you next time.